Hi, we are here with Peter Molyneux, Creative Director for Fable 3, and he is going to answer some of your questions. What kind of innovative ideas have you got in mind for the Kinect system, and are you going to be working on any Kinect games in the near future? Um, gosh, that's a you know politically charged question for the first one. Um, yes, we're doing some work on Connect stuff. I love Connect. I think it's a really cool device. It it's just makes me a as a designer think in completely new and different ways. You know, we did have some functionality we're thinking about for Fable, but you know, it's going to take us a while to craft that. So you can expect that you know sometime later. And we are, have got another super secret project we are working on at Limehead to do with Connect. So I just spoke for five minutes without telling you anything there, but maybe. But we did find out there's a super secret project yes. coming out. Yeah. My question is about the new continent of Aurora. Mm. Uh, will we see any Aurorans, mm -hmm. what me and my friends are calling people from Aurora, mm. uh, and their town or settlements as well as able to interact with them during both halves of the game? If this question can be answered, mm. thanks in advance, and I can't wait to play the game. Ah, great. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to be a little bit careful here because I don't want there to be any spoilers. But the Continental Aurora is a new, totally new place for you to explore. It's got lots of outside regions, it's got lots of inside regions, and it's got a huge city. There are the Aurora and people there. They're very different. You can think of them as being different and um, it's all part of the drama that unfolds. What can you do in the second half of the game, i.e. types of punishments, the way you rule, <laughs> etc.? Okay, so again, I'm going to be a little bit careful about spoilers here. Um, you, because you're king, I really want you to think, I you know, want to be whatever king I, you know, I choose to be. So there are points in you being king where you can decide on you know, who suffers, who starves, who who's, you know, has your royal favour and who doesn't have your royal favour. There are points in when you're ruling where you decide, look, I made this promise on the way to being a king, <laughs> I'm not going to keep it. And that s sort of crafts your kingdom and your whole rule. Again, I don't tell you much, but I don't want to spoil, there's a big surprise in the ruling section, which I really don't want to spoil. How long will Fable 3 be? Although I really enjoyed Fable and the sequel, they were both short. Also, how much more immersive is it than the first two? Um, <clears throat> so, that's a very interesting question, actually. As a designer, it really interests me when people say, you know, Fable wasn't long enough. And some people say Fable was too long. It was too immersive. It was too, there was too much to do. And that's one of the reasons that we've created this road to rule. It's a way of you actually unlocking game features as you play the game. And so I'd say, well, if you want to speed run through it, we call them trailblazers. If you want to be a trailblazer, if you want to go on this road to rule, and you go, as you go through each of these gates, you're only going to open one or two of these gameplay chests. And when you get to the end of the game, you will look back over this road to this road that you've gone, and there'll be, I don't know, there'll be 20 chests that you haven't opened, 20 pieces of gameplay you haven't experienced. But you may say to yourself, I'm done. I don't want any different gameplay. I'm going to move on to the next game. Or you may say to yourself, well, I wonder if I open, if I just, you know, dabble around with this piece of gameplay. Or you may say to yourself, you get to a certain gate and say, ah, there's too many of these chests I'm leaving behind. I'm going to go back and open a few more. And so, to a certain extent, the length of the game is very much up to what you're like as a gamer and how many of these chests you're going to open. Because if you try and open every single chest as you pass by it, it's going to take you, I don't know how many hours, but it's going to take you, you know, a good 20 hours. If you're a trailblazer and you're rushing through, then it'll take you a lot longer than that. I don't know. It's hard for me to say 14 to 15 hours. Where do you see the video game industry as a whole being in 10 years? Um, well, you know, I think, it's, I think in the last 10 months, pretty amazing things have happened, haven't they? In the last about a year, we've had this Connect announcement, 
Facebook games have come from nowhere to be you know, hugely popular. There's tens of millions of people playing on that as we speak. We've got um, you know, this idea of live, and people connecting and playing together you know, far, far more. We've got new ways of buying games and interacting with games. So there's a lot happening. If I look at all that stuff and I said, well, let's just pick a couple of things of what is definitely going to be here. So I think in 10 years' time, we're definitely, there's going to be a lot of people that are interacting with computer games in a completely different way, totally different way. And that's going to lead to completely different genres of game, which you and I couldn't even imagine at the moment. I think undoubtedly we're going to have games which will connect together even more than they have before that allow us to do things more than just compete with us, uh, each other or co-op with each other. It's a very interesting thing about creating stuff together and enjoying stuff together. I think you're going to see a lot more of that stuff. And I think you're going to see you know, devices like the iPhone and the iPad and Android being interesting um, gaming platforms as well. Besides and, and lastly, almost certainly, there's going to be a surgical implant into your brain to allow you to experience <coughs> computer games, you know, as if they were real. There will be one in ten chance of you becoming a zombie, of course, but who cares? <laughs> so besides a game that you mm. have worked on developing, mm -hmm. what is your favorite video game of all time? It's like, that's, that's such a hard question. There's so many beautiful experiences. I mean, I loved, I was so inspired by a game called Ico. It's just brilliant. You know, that was a fantastic experience. I loved RTS games, you know, like Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Strategy games like uh, Civilization. Role-playing games like Wizardry and Ultima, J uh, JRPGs like Final Fantasy VII. I mean, you, you, it's cruel to ask me to pick one of those. You know, it's, it's like you try. The public wants to know. Oh, okay, okay. I think it's going to have to be. Hmm. I think it's going to have to be Ico. Just p the pure artistry and the, the atmosphere and the drama was was great. Oh, but then there's Half-Life. Hang on a second. <laughs> no, I'm going to pick Half-Life 2. Yeah, Half-Life 2, definitely. Yeah. Well, then there's Portal. I don't know. I can't pick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. There's a lot. Well, and that's it. Uh, this is Peter Molyneux, and he just answered your questions. Thank you.